What's up everybody, I'm Matt. And I'm Beth. And today we're gonna to be reviewing the interior in the 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee. So the Grand Cherokee is all new here for 2022. There was the L version was introduced last year and so that is a new addition here. And that's just one important thing to note right off the bat is if you like the Grand Cherokee formula but you need three rows or you want a little bit more space than what we talk about in this video, you can get the L version and uh, then you have that extra space. But as far as the interior here in the new Grand Cherokee, totally different totally a clean slate design here and i think that it looks very premium now this one we're sitting in is a summit reserve trim so this one is just under seventy thousand dollars and i'll kind of talk about the pricing a little bit later on in the video but um it's very nice lots of high-tech stuff that you can't even get in some of the other competitors but um 70 grand for a grand cherokee is a lot <laughs> yeah it seems definitely hefty but it is really nice on the inside so you get what you pay for. Yeah, they definitely, I mean, up the game with everything. I mean, like you have like open pour wood here, you have the passenger display, which is something like basically no one else offers aside from like Mercedes and their brand new electric stuff. Other than that, like nobody has a passenger display. I mean, so there are some very high tech things here that set it apart. This Macintosh stereo is also a really cool thing. I'm loving all of these luxurious touches. However, I just feel like this open pour wood is really pretty but it looks a little fake and it also feels a little fake even though i know that it's real i just wish that maybe it was a little bit of a darker or a lighter color to kind of make it a little bit less orange yeah and i feel like in some other vehicles with open pour wood it's not quite as smooth like this has like a waxy coating to it that you don't get with a lot of other open pour woods that i guess would make it feel plasticky yeah i think that's kind of what's throwing us off here a little bit because it is real wood according to jeep so um but just one little interesting thing there so anyway first thing sitting down in these seats you have um these really nice quilted palermo leather seats which is the top leather you can get here in the grand cherokees of course you can't get lower leather and faux leather and stuff in the lower trims but it's a really rich feeling leather and the quilting's really nice they're also heated ventilated and they have massage and there's a whole bunch of different programs here for the massage. One's even called Rock Climb, which is a fun little reference to the Jeep heritage. But the massage worked well. Everything else works really well in these seats. And uh, I do also appreciate that now there are physical controls for the heated uh, seats and the heated steering wheel, all that kind of stuff. Because in past Jeeps, they've kind of relied only on the screen. And so it's nice to have some hard buttons here. Yeah, and it's really great that the passenger also has all of the same amenities as the driver. You even get your massage seat which is really nice yeah and even having the passenger side memory is another like thing you only usually see in luxury brands for the most part and so Jeep definitely brought all the feature content here for sure but once again this is the top tier one so if you're getting a lower version it's probably not going to have all of these amenities yeah definitely a lot less and um, depending on what you're looking at for example like if you were to get one of the lower trims like a limited which is in the high forty thousand dollar range low fifty thousand dollar range like those don't come standard with like cooled seats which something like a Kia Telluride or something like that does come with uh, cooled seats whenever you're at that price point so you know depending Depending on where you're landing trim wise the value may or may not be good if you're looking for everything you, know, you can possibly get in a car you know this is gonna be really cool but if you are someone who wants you know to watch your money a little bit more um, you know you might get more in some of the competitors but you know the Jeep has of course the off-road capability and stuff which I talk about more in the driving review I'll get into all the pricing and how it compares to those competitors the steering wheel is also really nice I also love how you have some more of that open pour wood here on that the contrast stick Stitching. Um, it's just a nice uh, wide wheel here. It's got a little bit of a wider 93 grip though, but you still can have a pretty good grip on the wheel and uh, it's heated and you have little paddle shifters here even on the back of the wheel, which is probably unnecessary for this type of vehicle, but nice to have that. And uh, just a fair assortment of buttons here on it, but very easy to figure out. You have your traditional uh, rocker switches here on the back, which has been a staple of any uh, FCA and now Stellantis product for the past, you know, 10 years or whatever. The gauges here in the Grand Cherokee are really nice. So these are the same gauges I talked about in the uh, Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer uh, we reviewed a couple of months back but they're a 10.1 inch display and uh, I really like the way they set them up so it's kind of cool how depending on what view you're in you can either have the gauges be larger or smaller and then kind of recline back and then you have you know a bigger view of the map or whatever music you're listening to and a bunch of other things like that and so a lot of good functionality in there you also have a few cool little Jeep things with you know seeing like off-road status as far as the pitch and the angle of the vehicle and 
all that. And uh, so, yeah, they all look really nice there. The only weird quirk, though, was during the week whenever we were navigating, it's really great that when you're running, uh, even if you're running, like, maps through CarPlay, whatever app you're running for navigation, it will actually put those directions into the uh, gauge cluster there, which is great, because a lot of other companies, they force you to use their navigation system if you want to have all that kind of integration. But this, you can have Waze, Apple Maps, whatever, and it'll put it into the gauge cluster, put it into the head-up display as well. And it's really nice that it does that, but it, there was multiple times where there weren't any new directions and it still kept like reclining backwards and forwards with the gauges where it'd be like oh let's do a big view let's do a small view and it was just like doing this back and forth thing it was kind of strange um so still maybe a little bit buggy with the way some of this stuff is set up you know this is again first model year stuff but um you know overall i really like the gauges and like i mentioned the heads up display is really nice here so you can have four different zones so it can show you you know your speed speed limit but also you can have it show those navigation directions as well as you know what song you're listening to all kinds of stuff up there your safety tech of course it'll also have all that up there too and you also can minimize that you can have less things if you don't want quite as much of an overwhelming view there and so great to have so much customization with that head-up display as well but coming over to the center of the dashboard here so right up top you have a few switches here and then you have the 10.1 inch touchscreen which only comes standard in these highest trims and that's a little disappointing considering a 10 inch screen isn't a big upgrade these days like a lot of car companies give you a 10 inch screen as standard if you don't go for these higher trims or some type of option package you're still stuck with an 8.4 inch screen which feels a little dated at this point you know just from a size standpoint obviously it still works fine there's no issues with it it's just from a tech standpoint it's not quite as much of a wow factor as some of the uh, newest crossovers these days that have these massive screens yeah and I feel like an 8 inch screen in this particular space right here is going to just look really cheap yeah, just a little too small and... Yeah, and it's going to have too much around it and you're just going to get it dirty more often and it's just not going to look very good. Yeah, big bezels are not very attractive. <laughs> um, but otherwise, so it runs Uconnect 5 for this screen. It's usually pretty good. It depends on the model because the Wagoneers were a little glitchy. But in this, thankfully, it wasn't glitchy. Wireless CarPlay worked flawlessly all week for me. And it's just, you know, pretty easy to navigate, pretty logical with the way it's all set up. It's also nice how if you don't want to dig into the the screen stuff again you have your volume and tune knobs you have your climate control knobs and all that kind of stuff right beneath the screen so you don't have to go into the screen for everything and uh, so I just I like the way they set it up yeah I also love how it's angled and it's just straight on it's really easy to use and I love having those buttons but they don't feel like there's a ton and it doesn't also feel like it's overwhelming it just is clean and easy to use yeah it's a nice blend for sure so they did a really good job with that and then the big headline thing here for these top versions of the grand cherokee is that there's a passenger display there and so that is another like 10.3 inch screen and that screen has a bunch of different functionality. So you can, for example, find a place in the navigation uh, system and then send it over to the driver's screen. I mean, you're only talking about like, you know, a five inch difference there. So it's, it's kind of funny that, you know, but it's, I guess, nice if you don't want to be looking at the center screen, you can be looking forward towards the road and still be, you know, changing stuff, I guess. Right. I just think it's a little strange. I personally don't feel a need for it necessarily right now maybe in five ten years every car is going to have this so it's just going to be a standard thing but right now i think it's just a little too early and i don't get it <laughs> yeah and it also is a little dim it's like not super bright so it's not great for viewing things um because they're saying you know it has amazon fire tv and i'll talk about that with the tvs in the back there but you know i mean there are some things that kind of make sense like for example you can control what the rear screens are playing and like having you do that on your own screen over there while i'm doing navigation or whatever could be convenient for sure right. but yeah it just seems like tech for the sake of having tech i commend them for having the bravery of offering it and trying to you know pioneer that um but i feel like most people or you'll just bring an iPad with you and watch whatever you want on that instead of, you know, that. So that's part of the reserve package for this Summit trim. It's a couple thousand dollars extra and gives you a few extra things as well. I don't think that's worth paying for, but it is definitely a cool party trick to show off to people that you have a screen in your dashboard on the passenger side. Also, this infotainment system is paired up with this Macintosh 
16 speaker, 950 watt stereo. And it's very impressive because this is the first application, um, this and the Wagoneer, of Macintosh using their stereos in cars. So it's a pretty big deal. And it's a very impressive sounding stereo. It's one of the best out there under $100,000, I think. That's pretty clear to me. I mean, it is incredibly crisp and clear. Even just with wireless Apple CarPlay, I didn't even have a wired in source and it still just was really impressive. The bass and everything, of course, is really sweet. And so it's definitely one of my top systems under $100,000 for sure. But that is another thing that is only here on these super top trims. So you're gonna have to be able to pay, you know, a lot of money for a Grand Cherokee if you wanna have this stereo system. But if you're an audiophile, it might be worth it alone because I mean, this stereo is really unmatched, I think, in this segment. Although all the, you know, Mercedes and BMWs and Audi and stuff don't have bad stereos either but this one is still very very nice um but then anyway moving on to uh, the other stuff here in the center you'll see a really nice solid chunk of aluminum here for your shifter these nice little toggles and stuff but we have a bunch of black uh piano black plastic here in this area and you know it fits with the screen and stuff where it's all nicely blended together with the climate controls but down here i mean there are a lot of scratches it's this, terrible yeah and this thing doesn't even have five thousand miles on it and yes it's a press vehicle it probably has lived a rougher life than someone who's babying their own personal car but still i mean this just shows you it's gonna look terrible pretty quickly <laughs> yeah and it's crazy because you're spending so much for this car and they have all of this wood trim here why don't you just add the wood here i mean my mercedes has that and i think that it's really really nice to be able to have that and i have not gotten scratches on it and if i have you can't see it right. and that's the thing is like you can see every little scratch you can also see every hair that's you know flying around in the air every piece of dust fingerprints and, all that yeah it's dirty it's gross i definitely don't like it yeah i mean i can kind of see from an aesthetic standpoint like they wanted this all be one cohesive thing yeah and it looks pretty but at the same rate it's not going to be pretty for very long right. unless you're constantly never touching it never putting anything on it you also do have what looks like padding by the center tunnel here where your knees are at but it's actually really hard it like looks way nicer than it actually feels and this is all loose by oh, the way yeah. i don't know if this is a pre-production vehicle or something you know i would definitely check this out your dealer wiggle this stuff because this is all still like not good from a fit and finish standpoint and again if you're talking about a 30 or 40 thousand dollar car okay fine but a 70 thousand dollar car like no way should like you have you know the center yeah it feels wiggling. like i can oh i can actually probably give it a little bit of give here and i can rip this whole thing off honestly so it's yeah you want to guys i am not i'm not that strong i just like this is kind of crazy so this could be a very early production model i will give them a pass for that but hopefully that's all that is uh, but just wanted to point that out just in case um and then also in this area here we can uh, go to some of our storage spaces so you'll see right underneath the climate controls here there is a wireless charging pad and a ton of hookups here so you'll see two USB jacks, two USB-C jacks, as well as the HDMI port here for the passenger display. Then you also have a normal power outlet. And so great to have all that stuff in there. You also have an auxiliary jack. So if you want to you know, stay old school, you can use the aux jack, you can do that as well. And then you also have your two cup holders back here, which are backlit, which is nice. There's a center armrest here, which is nice and softly padded. And it has two levels to it. There's one that's lined with felt here. And then the bigger lower level here will give you another USB jack and another USB-C jack there and that's also where if you want to have a video source through USB you run it through there so um, cool to have all those hookups and then you also have nice large pockets here in the doors with a bottle holder and I also love how the doors have this Macintosh logo that's uh, illuminated here on the speaker girls it's a really nice touch backseat space in the Grand Cherokee is okay honestly i thought that whenever this vehicle was getting a little bit longer that it would have been more space given to the rear apparently they just added more space to the cargo area which i don't think was lacking to begin with as you'll see in a minute the cargo space is great but i wish they would have given the back seat at least the option to slide um there is no way to slide them they do recline and it still is an okay amount of space i'm five foot nine and me sitting behind myself i have between like three to four inches of legroom to spare not 
bad, but for, you know, one of these larger mid-sized SUVs, you know, it's not best in class or anything. Like a Honda Passport has the same amount of space, basically. And so I'm guessing that maybe you'll have a little more space in the three-row Grand Cherokee L. So if you're someone who really is concerned about space, that's probably going to be the way to go. Even we had a rear-facing car seat, and with that, uh, you know, in again, in the position it needs to be in for to have enough clearance, me being 5'9", sitting in this front passenger seat, I have maybe an inch of legroom to spare. It's not super spacious. So even though Grand Cherokees, you know, kind of, at least in my opinion, always have this like image of being this like big SUV, it's kind of tighter in here than I was expecting personally. But being the Summit Reserve trim, that back seat is loaded with features. So it's quad zone climate control. So you see that both sides of the back seat can have their own temperatures. They're also heated and cooled rear seats back there, which is very impressive. But that is also something that's worth noting that, you know, stuff like a Honda Passport doesn't offer that, but you can get that in some of the three row stuff like the uh, Kia Telluride, Hyundai Palisade, things like that do offer that kind of stuff as well. But you also will see in that little area, your own air vents, of course, as well as two more USB jacks, two more USB USB C jacks and 115 volt power outlet there to power up, you know, whatever you want to uh, play back there. And uh, speaking of the rear entertainment, that's also an option. You don't have to get those screens, but you have these screens. And I gotta say, they have one of the better integrations in a car as far as the entertainment options you have. So it's Amazon Fire TV powered. So it's like any other thing, like a Roku or any of that kind of stuff, where you know you have your Netflix streaming, um, basically anything you know you see on your smart TV, you can have streaming here through the built-in Wi-Fi in the car and um, it works okay now there are remotes to control some of it but it was not a great experience like I was just trying to pull up my own YouTube channel on, on the screens back there and it just was very hard to even do that so it's not the best and it's also kind of slow and laggy so depending on what source you're doing and how you're using those screens that might work okay but I still think you know especially since it's you know something you have to pay extra for and it's not cheap I feel like having just two iPads for those two rear seat occupants probably is an easier way to go still. But again, I commend them for at least improving on this tech and not just having two you know screens in the back that have no smart integration whatsoever and just have you know hookups and are dumb screens essentially. I'm glad that they have you know the extra you know tech in them and stuff, but still think it needs a little bit of a speed improvement there for those um but uh, another last little thing here to mention is you have this panoramic roof here in this one and so that's a really great view for those rear seat occupants as well and they also do have a full down center armrest there as well as little pockets in the doors there as far as storage space goes but moving on to the cargo space here in the grand cherokee it's a good amount of space there as you can see very long nice and wide a little bit of space under the floor there as well although it's not much because you have a pretty large spare tire but um, I don't think you're going to have any complaints as far as the uh, cargo space there in the back. It is certainly, I think, pretty close to best in class, if not best in class back there. And then, you know, if you were, again, going for the L and you didn't need to use the seats in the back there, then you would have an extra almost one full foot of extra space in the back as well. And so great that you have that option there. But yeah, so overall, you know, it's nice. I don't know if it's 70 grand nice, even with all the cool, you know, tech and the way they kind of, you know, jazzed up the interior with the luxury appointments and stuff. You know, 70 grand by you a pretty well equipped like Mercedes GLE, a very nicely equipped BMW X5, um, even like a Land Rover Defender you can get for 70 grand if you want you know the off-road thing. Now the Defender is not gonna have as nice of an interior as this at 70 grand but you know the point still stands there. There's a lot of luxury branded stuff you can get that's you know very impressive for $70,000. Um, so that's kind of the tough thing here with the Grand Cherokee is Jeep's kind of positioning it almost like a luxury branded option here with these upper trims if you go for the lower trims and you can do without some of the features and stuff it might make sense but then again like i said i think the telluride palisade stuff like that these days gives you more for your money um so you know it's just going to come down to exactly what trim you're looking at what you specifically want out of it um and of course again if you want something with the famous jeep off-road capability the extra ground clearance you don't get in some of the competitors and stuff totally get that but Otherwise, you know, this interior is nice, but I still think, you know, it needs a bigger screen to justify the price and, you know, some higher quality stuff than even what they have here. If you're going to you know, be spending $70,000 um, and you're trying to compete with Mercedes and BMW and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so that's all of our thoughts. Let us know your thoughts on the Grand Cherokee in the comments below. Huge thanks to Jeep for providing us here with this vehicle to review. Definitely be sure to check out the driving review too if you want to see how the vehicle drives. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take, Take care. care.